So what we're going to do first is we are going to add um, a teacher manually, a student manually, and kind of do that whole process. So when you're doing it one at a time. So first, we're going to go into that administration. We are going to click on users. Here, we're going to go ahead and add a user. And we are going to type in the first last name initial location. So I have three different locations there. I'm going to use the ELA test district. Make sure you choose the role of teacher. I'm going to enter in the email address here. And when you set add a user, a teacher manually, you do have to set the password for them. So at that, like you want to follow these characteristics but you want to um, just do it as a generic one so the teacher can get in. Oops, if I can type, we'll be okay. There we go. Once that's done, you wanna click save and open. My thing won't get out of the way. Hold on one second, there we go. All right, so now you're gonna see um, the full details of the teacher. See that they're active, that they have the role of teacher, what we want to do is just kind of confirm the locations. Um, the district is added as a test district. And if you want to, for instance, I only have one building under the test district. So that's, that teacher is then added to that location. If you have multiple locations under your district and you want to add them to all of them or just single one, you want to go ahead and do that manually from here. Now, when you're doing this manually as well, so one of the things, I'm just gonna do a quick here for the KRA test district. You can see that it's already, it has the users associated with this location at the top, just verifying. All right, so now that we have the teacher added manually, we want to go ahead and let's say, we're gonna go ahead and add a student manually. You wanna go on the left to organizations, select view districts, view locations, view students and then here you will have the add a student button so for here you're going to go ahead and type in the student's ssid number and no that's not well as you can see if you have that ssid number and let's say like you see here well that ssid number has already been entered into the system so what happens actually is it will fill in the first name and last name and for that student. And so then you from there would go ahead and fill in the rest of the information. I'm actually, um, all right. So we type in that SSC, SSID number. So it's two letters and seven digits. So then we're gonna go next to the line of first name, type in the first name. You can put the middle name in, that's an option. You don't have to. And then last name, we're gonna go ahead and fill in the gender. You can pick whether the student is Hispanic, yes. And then pick the race for the student and the birth date. And as you can see, like Ed stated earlier is the formatting. So we wanna make sure we use the months as, so if it's February, so we wanna put zero two and then for February 1st, zero one, and then the entire year, 2017. Here you can pick the disability code, leave it blank, select whether the student is an English language learner, um, IEP, or the low social economic status. So from there, we're just gonna go from that and we're gonna hit save and open. So what this does is now you're gonna see four tabs for the student. You're gonna see the details of what you just entered data collection assignments, enrollments, and point of authority. When you're adding a student manually, just doing that, you want to make, still make sure you follow the next couple steps. So first, we're going to go ahead and go to the enrollments tab, and we're going to assign a teacher to the student. Click assign, and click assign, and then finish. And you're going to see your teachers assigned up here at the top. It's going to do a countdown. Now, even though you just assigned a teacher manually there, doesn't mean that that is students gonna show up in the teacher's roster. 
you have to do the data collection assignment in order for the teacher to see the student. So when a teacher comes back and says, hey, I can't see group, you know, and you clearly see that that student is assigned to the teacher, it's because of that data collection assignment is not added. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna assign the winter. Now I wanna let you know that when the spring one window does open, which is February 15th, you will be able to assign the 15th winter data collection co token from there. So at that point, now that student, it will show up on that teacher's roster. And that's kind of how you want to do it, especially when it, there's three different files when you're doing it through the bulk loader. But that manual step of an enrollment file is that data collection assignment tab. So make sure you're clicking that. One quick thing I do want to go through is if you want to remove a student from a teacher's roster. Let's say the student leads your district. <clears throat> And you want to make sure that that student does not show on the teacher's roster. You want to go to your students, select open, go to the enrollments tab, and simply click remove. It's going to ask, are you sure? Hit OK. It's going to do a countdown. So when that happens, you are now going to see the student is no longer active, but inactive. And that will mean that the student will not show on any of the reports that you pull. And it will not, that student will not show also in the teacher's roster. 